Hello, everyone. In this video, we will explore the incidents dashboard in Cortex XDR. During this how to session, we will discuss the different components of the incident dashboard, including data elements being displayed, the different sections of the advanced incident view, and a brief discussion of remediation suggestions. The incidents dashboard shows recently created and updated incidents from all alert sources feeding into Cortex XDR. Incidents include a score, severity, key assets and artifacts, alerts and insights, timelines, and execution information depending on the source of the alert and information gathered through log stitching and alert correlation. Various response actions are also available from different locations in the incident dashboard. Incidents are created when a medium or high severity alert is received, which does not correlate to an existing incident. Subsequent alerts of any severity related to the incident will automatically be joined to the incident and incident information will be updated. On the incidents dashboard, there are two views available. First, the single pane mode shows a table of incidents. And second, the split pane view, which allows viewing detailed incident data. Views can be toggled via the toggle button in the upper right hand corner. We will be focusing on the split pane view as it allows us to navigate through the list of incidents and view incident details. The left hand side shows the list of incidents sorted by the last updated date and shows the severity, score, assignment, status, general summary, key assets, and alert sources as indicated by icons in the lower left-hand corner. Details about the currently selected incident are displayed on the right-hand side. Displayed at the top are severity, score, incident ID, an optional incident name, the assignment, status, alert breakdown summary, alert sources, and key asset information. The three dots menu in the upper right hand corner allows us to perform actions such as changing the status, severity, creating exclusions, and accessing the remediation suggestions, which we will look at later in the video. Below this top section, we have overview, key assets and artifacts, alerts and insights, timeline, and execution. Each of these tabs will show us more detailed information about the incident. First, let's look at the overview section. The overview section shows us a summary of what we will find in the remaining sections, including MITRE attack mapping of alerts and insights, last updated date and updated action, the original creation date and information, an alerts breakdown, alert source information, and an alerts section, which includes all hosts and users involved in the alerts. The key assets and artifacts section shows us all files, hosts, and users involved with the alert. The artifacts section shows us all files involved, including file hash, wildfire verdict, and a link to the wildfire analysis report, file signing. If configured, virus total information will be displayed, Additionally, we can see the number of alerts each file is involved in. Clicking on the three dots menu in the file area gives us additional options. For example, adding to block or allow list, or opening the hash view, or searching for the file on all endpoints. The assets view shows us hosts and users. In the host section, we can see the host name, running operating system, agent connection status, IP addresses, the number of alerts each is involved in, and via the three dots menu, we can perform certain response actions, such as initiating a malware scan or isolating the endpoint. The user section shows us users involved, the number of alerts they're involved with, and the three dots menu allows us to view the alerts associated with each user. The alerts and insights section allows us to see the alert table for the incident. Note that the alerts are medium and high severity alerts, while insights are low in informational alerts related to the incident. This table can be navigated the same as any other table within Cortex XDR, including filtering, sorting, and customizing the layout. 
The timeline view shows us the history of the incident since it was created with the most recent activity shown at the top. Not only can we see changes related to actions performed by responders, such as changing the severity, we can see when new alerts and artifacts were related to the incident and why were they identified as related. For example, here we can see three alerts from this user were added to the incident because they were related to the same process causality chain. Additionally, we can click on events to see the alerts table for the alerts that were related. We can see key assets that were identified and a comment section where we can add new comments. The execution section allows us to see the causality chains for process trees related to the incident. Each causality shows us the process tree for a single causality group owner on a single host. By clicking on expand, we can get a larger view and also interact with a view to get additional information. The leftmost process shown is the causality group owner or the process in the causality chain that the causality analysis engine identified as being responsible for or causing the activities that led to the alert. Shown to the right are child processes for the CGO which are involved in the alert. A significant amount of information is shown in this view, including process name, execution state, alerts and alert sources, as well as other additional information. Hovering over a particular process will reveal some information while clicking on it will allow us to view detailed information. By clicking on a process, we can see a detailed breakout of data gathered by the XDR agent on the endpoint. For example, we can see all the actions performed by the process, including file and network activity, as well as the alerts table for alerts associated with the process. We can also see this information summarized in the causality view as indicated by icons above processes which generated alerts. For example, we can see that the cortex icon here indicates we received alerts from the endpoint agent, whereas the italicized B shows us that we received BIOC alerts from the analysis engine. Cortex XDR investigates suspicious causality process chains and incidents on your endpoints and displays a list of suggested actions to remediate processes, files, and registries keys on your endpoint. To initiate remediation suggestions from the incident view, click on the three dots and go to remediation suggestions. Cortex that dynamically analyzes all EDR data in real time along with the causality process chain to determine remediation suggestions, so opening this view may take a little time. Once this view is populated, we will be presented with a list of actions Cortex-XDR has identified as potential remediations to the actions performed in the incident. To perform actions, we can check the box beside any actions we wish to take, right-click, and select Remediate will be presented with a confirmation box to confirm the actions we wish to take. Actions available to us include deleting and restoring files and register keys, as well as terminating malicious causality chains. If Cortex-XDR cannot recommend an automated remediation, the action will be presented to us from the original event, but the suggested remediation will be manual remediation. No action can be taken from this, and right-clicking on it will not reveal the remediate option. To support remediation suggestions, endpoints must be running XDR agent version 7.2 or higher and have enhanced data collection capabilities enabled, which requires a pro per endpoint license. When incidents are generated within Cortex-XDR, large amounts of data are collected and correlated. The incidents view allows us to view all of this information in a logical layout to quickly determine the activity which occurred and the scope of the incident. Using all of this available information, incident responders can take action to quickly contain malicious activity and remediate malicious actions performed within the environment. Thank you and have a great day.